Hey everyone, this is Anka Metcalf with TradeOutloud.com and this is the weekly futures market outlook uh, for the week starting with today, March 24th. And uh, let's begin with the weekly charts and let's begin with the e mini Dow. Last week was uh, the FOMC week, so we navigated higher. Uh, managed to break into the in mini Dow over 26,000, actually going for a high very close to these prior resistance zones right here into the 150 zone. And then uh, shortly after, on Friday, uh, we did have quite a bit of a sell-off uh, that uh, had happened. So sending the price uh, within the parameters of the prior week, uh, so far, we have support into the 25,250 and we have resistance back into this 26,200 zone. So we're trading within this range. Uh, the weekly chart still has a bit of a room into the 25,420 zone, into the 400 zone where we have this 10 exponential moving average. So that is going to represent dynamic support. It's also a really key zone because it's also deriving from another area of resistance uh, from these prior highs back in 2018 and spring and summer of 2018. So we have a pretty solid shelf into the 25. To 60. Uh, for this week, uh, let's see how we handle the current support zone that uh, we have formed at the end of the day on Friday. However, leaving this big shadow behind and also right on the week right here, we're if we break this 25,500 level, there is still room for the 25,400 and perhaps into into the 25. Uh, 200 area where we have this uh, dynamic support. Also, the daily chart left us with a daily sell situation. We still have room into the 25, uh, 200, like I said, and this is going to be the line in the sand. If we open week uh, tonight and going into tomorrow, and by the way, we don't have a lot of economic events for next week. Uh, also, there are uh, th some things that uh, we need to take into consideration. It is the end of the month. It is the end of the quarter. And uh, it is also uh, prime time for window dressing. So let's see if the market just sold off to be picked up uh, into the end of this week. So probably we will see a turnaround Wednesday. If we should see a turnaround Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, these last three days should be a little bit more bullish um, depending on how uh, how everything is going to pan out. And like I said earlier, we don't have a lot of uh, economic re releases for this week. We do have consumer confidence that's coming in on Wednesday and uh, we have very few uh, things that are going to impact. And with the quarter wrapped up, we're getting ready for another big uh, quarter. The second quarter this is going to report earnings just a couple of weeks from uh, from uh, from um, the end of next week. So, um, like I said before, we still have support into uh, into this confluence zone here into the 25200 to 25300 and this is going to be the balancing zone so going forward next week i just want to put very quickly here the hourly chart as we're heading into the overnight trading session in a few hours um I just want to zoom out a little bit so you can see what's going on right here. So we we made new highs. This is on Tuesday, Wednesday. We did have uh, uh, Wednesday. We did have the FOMC meeting. We saw the peak revisit of uh, revisit of the high, and we sold off in the overnight trading session. However, not violating this prior support zone first into the twenty five. 500. So going into next week, 25,500 is going to be uh, uh, the first line in the sand, and the second line in the sand is going to be 25,300. If we hold 25,500, we still have room for a progression higher. And I think that the balancing is going to happen between uh, between uh, this low into the uh, 500 and this high into the 25,700. We also have uh, we also have the 800, which is pretty much the line uh, that will differentiate the bulls and the bears. We trade above 25,800. We're going to go back to the highs. We stay below 25,800 and 
respectively under 600 we're going to navigate lower into the 400 300 and 200 200 also becomes a prime buy zone for uh the dow so that's not going to be a shorting zone shorting zone is going to be under 500 uh, between 500 and between 500 and pretty much 350 and as we're going if we push hard lower uh remember that there's all there's uh that daily chart uh with a double bottom here into the 25 uh 250 to 25 500 uh, 25 uh i'm sorry uh 25 uh, uh 250 to 25 200 that is going to put a lot of pressure on price and from this point on we can uh, uh that is more of a buy zone than a sell zone right now so uh we got to be very cautious uh and look for uh look for clear signs as we're going into uh the new trading week um, also, uh, we are into minor support into the m and &E SMP, tapping onto the daily at 2,800. Uh, 2, and we're also seeing a lot of support that is arriving from these prior pivot highs from last year back in December. So we had a really, really massive rally with a sharp pullback and a rotation above the 200 simple moving average, a close actually above uh, the, 200, the, uh, the 200 and the 20. Uh, moving average and a punch through the first area of resistance uh, navigated higher and then right now is just uh, balancing balancing out so um the weekly chart however i'm going to put the weekly chart right here leaves us a shadow so the most important thing for uh this pattern is that we traded above the 2820 broke above the 2820 so the price definitely confirmed that it it may be ready to continue higher so it's punched through this line so this time around on a next rotation this is not going to represent such a big uh area of resistance because we just navigated it we we broke through that and uh any rotation may take the price uh above the 2820 it's not going to be such a big hassle uh, right now, we're still trading into the minor support level, and it's also psychological into the 2800. Look at this prior pivot high back into the 2800. This is where we closed. Definitely for the week, we closed week, which means that if next week we're going to continue to break below 2800, we're going to probably see lower prices back into at least 2772. So we still have about 30 points lower cushion or so. Uh, at, and as we're going to be approaching the, the 70 to uh, to 55 level, 50 to 55 level, we're going to be getting ready for bullish activity once again. From the daily perspective, like I said, we're back into support here. So we need to wait for price confirmation in order to determine uh, which direction we should be moving into. Like I said, this is support right here. If this support is going to be breached, then we have room at least into the 70s. So at least 30 points lower. And that's for our uh, day traders. All right, let's uh, take on NASDAQ. Uh, NASDAQ, let's begin with the weekly chart right here. NASDAQ has a really wicked topping tail. And uh, obviously, uh, you know, it does have some support here deriving from this prior pivot high into the 73.50. But if we close, uh, if we close, oh, it, because we closed pretty weak um, uh, on the week. Uh, if we break below 73.10, then we may see some more tension that may drag the price lower into the uh, 72.40 zone and back into the uh, 7200. So these are the two areas. If we open week on Sunday, if the price should progress lower and press lower on Monday uh, through Tuesday, this is what we can expect at least in the next uh, uh, two trading days, contingent on breaking the 7320 uh, uh, and staying below 7320. All right, let's move on to the daily chart. Daily chart coming back into the 10 exponential moving average. Still has a little bit of error, but still trading into that support zone. So like I said, it trades below that 50 area. Uh, we should watch it and see if, it breaches this area then it has more uh trade more void to the downside however this is pretty much an um a, a 180 uh 180 reversal right here that we're having so we may be getting ready for another uh another pullback however i just want to show you very quickly the hourly chart 
the hourly chart is still guided by the 200 simple moving average. We still have plenty of support right here. So if things are going to be turning around and if we get a, a, a pop over 74.25, I think that we're going to start moving higher again. And uh, we had some pretty strong price action activity in some of uh, some of uh, the NASDAQ stocks this week, last week. All right, let's move on to Russell. Russell was the weakest index uh, moving into this week. Let's start with the weekly chart. As you can see right here, we have a bear sandwich. We just broke below the 1523 and we're back into the 1500. 1500 is a huge area along with the 1490 area. So that is a 10 point cushion area that is deriving from prior price action from last year, uh, th for, through last year, January, pretty much through the end of April. And also uh, we have these prior pivots here from October that did not uh, did not hold and the price sliced all the way into the 20, 1250 area. So uh, if the price should stabilize here, I think that we may be getting ready for another rotation higher. Why is that? Well, because I think that this may be an inverse head and shoulders on the weekly chart in Russell, should Russell come in back into the 14, uh, 1490 zone, test this area once again, we have the cluster here, we're gonna have a cluster here, so we could consider this as the right shoulder, left shoulder, and this is going to be the head, and this uh, 1553 is uh, pretty much 1553 to 1555 is going to be uh, the neckline from which we can expect a breakout higher. So uh, any transition that is going to push price above uh, uh, 1555 to 1560 may be seen as viable moving forward. Uh, one other thing, and I think it's a little bit too early to show this, but um, again, this is an area where we should be very cautious uh, because we have separate we have different time frames that are definitely uh indicating um uh, different elements on the chart so um like i said before russell has been one of the weakest it broke the weekly low continuation lower but at the same time it's into a 10 point cushion area from where it can bounce from the technical perspective, it should come in a little lower, right? Uh, uh, the way it is structured, it should come in a little lower. Uh, if this area is not gonna hold, like I said, this 10 point area from 90 to 1500, and if not, we're not going to get a rotation right away that is gonna push the price higher, on a trigger of 1490, I'm gonna set an alert for this, um, we can actually see more uh, downward price action that may push the price into this uh, into this tradable void at least into the 1390 so that's a really big uh, tradable void down there all right let's uh, take a look at gold uh, and uh, monthly chart tapped again back into uh, this uh, uh, confluence zone here into the 1280 and uh, it left a shadow behind. It is uh, really looking good for a continuation higher. I like this this really tall uh, bottoming tail right here on the monthly chart. Weekly chart, uh, It already uh, uh, we already triggered two weeks ago for higher. We're, we're progressing a little bit higher. I've been in and out about a couple of times uh, in gold already and uh, I'm actually looking now at another uh, trade uh, uh, going into uh, going into next week, but I'm going to be waiting for the roll first before I get in. Uh, and uh, it can move back higher. I'm going to zoom into some minor time frames, and I'm going to show you what I'm looking at. And can move higher back into this high and progress higher, uh, larger time frames back into the 1340 zone. Daily charts. Um, we're setting up a sandwich here as sloppy as it is, but it's still a bull sandwich. We trade above 17. We're going to be heading higher back into the 30s. It's a slow grind here, but I definitely like the structure. Uh, daily chart continuing to make higher lows and higher highs, which is constructive for our pattern. So now 1310 is going to become the new minor support zone moving forward. What I do like about this chart is the hourly chart. So even though we had, I mean, take a look at these wigs and we've had this pendulum effect back and forth, back and forth into uh, into gold. Uh, in the overnight trading, I'm sorry, in the overnight, in, in the yesterday's uh, 
sorry, in Friday's trading session, we managed to get into the 1314 zone and we managed to hold this balance around uh, the 1310. 1310 is minor resist, minor support deriving from this prior pivot high and it's coiling around this area. We get a pop over this uh, 1415, actually 15 area. We're going to be heading higher back into uh, the 1420. The risk on the other side, uh, on the other hand, is not going to be uh, as tight because if you want to take part in this move, you have to consider the prominent low right here. So 1302 is going to be the stop. So it's going to be a little bit of wider stop at the time of the trigger. Possibly you may be heading for uh, you. We may be looking for a little bit higher. I love the four hour chart. It is calling around the 200 simple moving average. This is very bullish right now because we've closed a four hour candle above the 200 simple moving average. So you can see that last uh, 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 last session, we did have this close right borderline with the 200 simple moving average. So I do like it moving forward uh, for higher. So gold for higher. Uh, wheat, uh, and I'm going to start with the monthly chart right here. Monthly chart looking very good with a punch, uh, uh, definitely with a punch through this minor resistance area right here. And we're trying to head a little bit higher if we break and this is uh, uh this is a really nice chart structure that if remain intact going into next week and if we're going to progress into next week uh then it come april 1st if we get a punch through this uh 470 uh, 72 this may be looking a little bit better but till then still very early like i said the the candle still not still in play uh, all right, so we had this uh, we had this really nice reversal here. We're in long, um, and uh, 462 uh, is the trigger. We punched through higher, but we didn't really manage to close above this 200 simple moving average. So we still need uh, a bit of a push to towards that area. Still has not violated any kind of uh, any stops at this point. So if we get a break this week above this high of 470, um, let's create this alert, um, 475, I'm just gonna leave it here into the 473 area, uh, we're gonna definitely punch in higher. So this is gonna be the line of the sand. If we rotate below 473, we're gonna go lower. I have no interest to in the short side because I'm long. Uh, but if we punch through the high of last week, then we should be heading higher. And uh, we we already achieved two of our targets. Uh, our third target is into the 475. And then uh, we're gonna be looking for uh, to clear the void into the 480 if that should happen. All right, I received lots of emails about natural gas asking, are you gonna get a natural gas? Well, not yet. Uh, natural gas is not ready yet. I have uh, taken the decision uh, once we trade it below this 1285, to close the trade. So we, oh, I'm sorry, 283. At 283, we close the trade. And currently, we're not in the trade because we have the rotation down. Should the price come back into the 250s, I'm going to uh, take a look and uh, see if there are any uh, trading opportunities for this. Um, all right, uh, bonds, I'm sorry. Uh, I was just reading uh, the comments uh, that I have received. Um, and, uh, what you guys want to hear. Okay, so we're going to go to bonds. Bonds had a big pop over this uh, resistance area. We have been talking in the trading room here uh, into the 146.20 full blast back into this prior high into the 148.25 uh, or so. So this is this is the prior high right now. So the fact that we just made a peekaboo high means that basically pullbacks may be bought back, uh, may be bought into the 150. So this is for the, this is a, a good day traders territory. So I saw a really big improvement uh, into the price action, uh, New York trading session price action going into, um, going into Friday. But the big pop actually came in the overnight. I'm gonna show you uh, here um, into, uh, on the one hour, so came 
at the London session. Remember that um, we're still London session now opens at four because of the daylight savings time. So uh, 4 p.m. we had the big pop that pushed the price higher back into this uh, 149 zone. And then uh, we pulled back again. So we saw a really nice progression, but definitely I didn't see any entry opportunities for, uh, for day trades for the New York trading session because the trade uh, has happened back here at four o'clock. So you're not out, you're not up at four o'clock to take advantage of the uh, to take advantage of the breakout, and the breakout came over 147.15. The risk for this trade was into the 146.30. It's bye bye time. So you have to pretty much determine what trading hours you're going to be trading and focus on those hours because other than that, you're going to be you know super tired just looking constantly. Uh, uh, just constantly looking at charts. Okay, so um, this is all for now. Thanks so much for tuning in. And remember that we run a trading room uh, where we uh, call everyday day trades if for the futures market and swing trades, and we also swing trade stocks. If you have any questions, you can feel free to email us at info at tradeoutloud.com, uh, or you can visit our website for more information. We also offer uh, futures uh, power income futures trading course uh, if you want to find out more about the class it's a comprehensive class that teaches you everything that you need to know for futures day trading and uh, if you're interested in that you could also visit our website you could also schedule a 15-minute consultation a live demo of what the class can teach you all right this is all for now thanks so much for uh, tuning up and I'll see you next week